Unique dice are important for proper role playing. Unique dice are important for role playing. Strange icons make better sense than mere numbers. Strange icons make way more sense than simple numbers. Now, go out and buy some dice. I should go out and buy some funky dice. What's up, Internet? Jay here from Nerd Rage Against the Machine, and today we're going to be discussing Star Wars role-playing, and specifically the most recent iteration by Fantasy Flight Games. One of the cool things about this game that, that I think they really did a smart move with is, unlike the previous iterations, which is, you know, the, the West End game, Star Wars D6 system, and the uh, later D&D-inspired, Third Ed-inspired D20 editions, Fantasy Flight took it upon itself to market three different products, each one with its own idea of how you're going to be playing the game. So kind of like a pre-focused campaign. In this case, the uh, the I items are as follows. First, we have the Edge of the Empire. Edge of the Empire is basically your Han Solo game. Um, if you liked the movie Solo, a Star Wars story, if you like the idea of doing Firefly in a Star Wars universe, the Mandalorian, Edge of the Empire is probably where you're going to want to start your game. Uh, the next one in the set is um, Age of Rebellion. And Age of Rebellion uses a, um, a more military approach. So this is the Rebellion versus the Empire. Again, if you're looking to tell a good war story in the Star Wars vein, that's where you're going to go. And last but certainly not least is Force and Destiny. Force and Destiny is your Jedi game. Now, I like this format in for what it does. Um, for one thing, each game is very focused. They are completely compatible. So it's not like you couldn't, say, build an entire game based upon Age of Rebellion and have one player build a character in, in Force and Destiny and have your Jedi that way. But what they do is each game does a lot to focus. So Edge of the Empire, for example, gives you a lot of material on criminal organizations, um, civilian starships, you know, those out-of-the-reach places and, and, and those dirty jobs that you're going to do it do for dirt cheap, um, or at least at reasonable rates. Age of Rebellion spends a lot more material and time on, on military aspects. If you're looking for a good smattering of Imperial vehicles, Imperial troopers, and, and all those NPCs, Age of Rebellion does have you covered. And likewise is true here. Now, just to jump back to these other two, uh, Age of Rebellion and, and Edge of Empire, there are rules in there for force users. And just like there are rules for weapons and all of them, there's rules for starships and all of them, but it's that focus. So if you build a, a Jedi or a force user in Age of Rebellion, you're going to be kind of limited. He's kind of like the stock. Well, yeah, he has the force, but it's really not a big deal. Where again, Force and Destiny being the Jedi game goes into lavishing detail on the setting. Um, for example, there are complete rules for how to build a custom lightsaber, as opposed to just a stock, you know, here's a lightsaber, it's a lightsaber, it's a lightsaber, lightsaber. Well, mine has a swept hilt and a kyber crystal that's made from um, Krayat Dragon Pearl. Um, so that's an example of how these games really evolve beyond just, you know, being a, another Star Wars role-playing game. I like that because it does make it easier for the GM if he knows what kind of game he's running to simply go out and pick up that and really fo hyper focus in that field. But again, these other books are, are super useful for additional material. You know, if you really want to introduce the force. So like a good, good example might be starting a, an Age of Empire campaign in a very military Twilight 2000-esque in Star Wars way and then introduce a Force player and then start to slowly push the Force narrative more into it by using this as, a, as effectively a giant supplement. Um, now saying that, as far as the production values, again, Fantasy Flight is not exactly known for slouching. They, you know, they do a great job, the art is amazing, the material is good, and for the most part, there's very little to complain about here. 
the system is point based. Uh, you get an experience point total, and then you build a career or a character off of a career and a sub career, and you gain abilities and feats. And then we get to the dice system, and that's really where the game. I gotta say, it's really a double bladed lightsaber or double edged lightsaber at this respect. On one hand, the the system for dice is innovative. It's interesting, and it does create a lot of cool concepts. On the other hand, it can also be a problem. Much the way a lot of role-playing games will build a life path system, which is super handy for a new player. You know, if you've never played before and you have no idea what you're doing, having someone tell you that, you know, your character is in love with the uh, the bookbinder's daughter and, you know, you once survived this massacre etc etc can really build a character so that you've got like all the stuff to work on on the same handle if you're an old hat at role playing you may have had an idea already set and the life path is just going to get in your way that's kind of where i feel with this dice system so what it is is the dice system is using icons as opposed to, to, to actual numeric values and you're counting these icons now that again is nothing new there are other board games and role playing games that have done this um, and the dice are basically, there's three types, uh, or technically there's six types we'll get into. Basically, it's there's a good and bad for statistics, a good and bad for skills, and a good and bad for modifiers, effectively. Now, these are called different things, you know, but basically the green dice are for your stats. The purple dice are the exact opposite. They're both D8s, and, and those purple dice are your difficulties. Um, you then have a yellow dice for skills and a red dice for uh, opposition, which again, are both D12s and they work opposite one another. And then blue for, for bonuses and black for difficulties, which are the modifier dice. You roll a pool of dice based upon your situation. So if you have a stat of say two skill, or two stat and one skill, then you would roll two, uh, one green and one yellow because the, stat, the skills circumvent one of those stats. But from there, you would roll that plus the amount of difficulty dice, normally two, um, but the GM may, may up or, or down that as he wishes. Um, and then you simply count the, the, uh, the, the, the symbols. Uh, there are symbols for um, success and failure, for advantage and disadvantage, and um, for triumph and, and threat. And what you end up doing with these is you kind of take them and, and get a more holistic idea of what happened. Instead of it being a, a typical, you know, D&D &D or even Star Wars D6, you know, I rolled, I hit that target number, I'm golden. This instead is, well, you hit, but you tripped in doing so, or you broke your weapon in doing so, or, you know, that kind of, it, it's not, it's more of an, uh, a murky water um, approach which does have its benefits. It's really cool to be able to throw things at a player. So like an example, I had a character just recently in a game where he failed, but he had a lot of advantage. So he ends up, they were on um, a planet during, right after the Order 66, there were still clone troopers running around and they were trying to figure out what's going on. So he falls into a cache uh, of deactivated battle droids who then come to life and start attacking the guys he was, he was in fight with. So again, he failed, but how cool is it that like something just out of the blue happened? Which is a, a cool concept, it really is. The downside is that it can be a time suck for players to look at those dice and go, well, I've got this, 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 this. You find time separating as opposed to just, you know, like, you need an 18 or better. I rolled a 20, hooray! Instead you have this kind of, well, I've got this, 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 and this. And then when you start peeling those away and get to like what you actually have left, then it becomes what actually happens. Now the GM can help, or can, can, can tell you what happens. There are charts in the GM screen which give you like, you know, in a combat situation, something like, you know, well, if you get this many successes, you can automatically turn this into a blue die for your, for your ally or a black die for your foe, so that you have some basic ideas of how to just do this mechanically. And um, each weapon has a critical rating. If you hit this many triumphs, it's a critical and you just basically do a wound. And, and a wound is a more, more than just a hit point level thing. It's, it's where you start hitting a critical damage thing. Like, you know, you tore a hamstring or, or, or you know, you got, you got blinded at least temporarily. Um, again, it works. It really does work. I don't want to get that impression that I, that I am against the way it works. At the same time, 
it can slow the game down looking at looking at this dice and then spending some time figuring out really what the dice that dice mean it's a little like reading tea leaves to that end uh the other thing about this is it's kind of par for the course for fantasy flight um a lot of rpgs sell custom dice don't get me wrong i have a set for rune quest i have a set for dune i have a set for first i have plenty of sets for star trek the role-playing game from modiphius but the thing is that for the most part they're not needed like i bought the star trek sets i could do without them i don't need them to play the game in this case um even the beta test they came with stickers that you could put on normal dice because yeah there's a chart in the book that you could kind of work out what this means but it really makes the game even far more complex and those assembled dice just make things a hundred times easier but it's also another product that they're asking you to buy fantasy flight is pretty big on that idea of more stuff to buy um they do have a lot of supplements this is not a game though where you know just buying the rule book is going to be enough you're going to need those dice at least um and ultimately you're going to need at least a couple sets um for for what i've been doing is i ended up just buying like five sets four sets and then i just you know what guys i have a communal pile just take you know, use my dice don't worry about buying your own they also do make an android or iphone app which to its credit does also work for their other games star wars legion x-wing armada so you know once you buy the app you're good for all those but again it's just another way of of pulling money from you and I, I get why it's just a little frustrating and and again while the system is cool it also does does have its drawbacks it's certainly not a perfect system not that any system is perfect but i think its weaknesses are kind of obvious as opposed to some other games um now again it's not to say that their strengths aren't there they are um and and the other thing of course you know beyond the mechanics of the system is that there's a lot of material here um i would argue that they have shown as much love to some of the newer star wars as, as west end did to some of the older stuff there is a lot of great material out there they finally started covering the clone wars post clone war stuff um rebels so one benefit of this game is the fact that you are going to get that information you're going to get more material on the newer stuff which you know say what you will about star wars love it or hate it you know it's an evolving genre it's an evolving media and you're gonna you know that stuff is there for a reason um this game will probably more likely see mandalorian material pr published professionally before any other version comes out all in all um i would say it's a good role-playing game not great i would say three out of five stars and with that uh, may the force be with you and and happy gaming